this book word power mastering english through vocabulary is a collection of chapters which deal with the various uses of words in english more than use of words i have tried to place before the readers and learners the value of words not merely the meaning of words but the value of words when we use it on different occasions and how sometimes words can be you know so mobile and so flexible sometimes they are so obedient to the user sometimes they rebel usage because we don't use them properly this can happen to anyone and i have often felt like correcting many people when they come out with brilliant ideas but in wrong english so the use of words appropriately correctly meaningfully effectively that's the key to success in fact all our life i think our life itself is a great striving after effective use of vocabulary so in this book i have uh, not only really taken the chair of a teacher but also a learner and also um, a person who can share with the learner the joy of using words the mischief laid uh, inherently and sometimes very uh, stealthily hiddenly in words same words we use it on different occasion and they mean differently for example a word like very common word restful which means peaceful without any trouble we all look forward to restful times but a word which sounds very similar restive it is so different in meaning we are used to using restless without rest uncomfortable but restive use restive means uncontrollable so when elephants are restless there can be restive we have been witnessing that in recent times similarly certain phrases certain combinations of words silver weddings silver weddings are actually the 25th wedding anniversary when somebody has completed 25 years of restful or restless marriage life it's called a silver wedding or a left-handed marriage a left-handed marriage is one in which the partner particularly the husband belongs to a higher realm of financial ability and the wife happens to be of a lower stratum so in such conditions in such a state according to the german culture the bridegroom offers the left hand to the bride so it's called a left handed marriage it's also called a morganatic marriage just interesting things but the point is you know when it is necessary for us to express certain ideas on certain occasions these kind of subtle differences are very useful to us also we write you know when we give gifts to somebody with compliments from what is the spelling we all know it c o m p l i m e n t s which means with appreciation with a congratulatory sentiment so it means happy sentiments compliments but there is another word which sounds the same compliment vitamin compliments where the spelling is c o m p l e m e n t that word is closer to complete so this couple this man and wife they are complimentary to each other one is very serious and the other is very happy go lucky so we say they are complimentary to each other where the spelling is c o m p l e m e n t a r y adjective so these are these are you know very interesting game like mischievous um, play of uh, words but this mischievous play this game also takes us to the immense possibilities of the uses of words and the uses of english language in this book i have also tried my best to you place these words uh, in 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 the places in sentences correctly appropriately uh, how a misplacement 
or a difference in placing the word in a sentence makes a big change in the meaning that it communicates. And also I have given quotations at the end of each chapter, quotations which have some connection with the words discussed in each chapter. As a teacher, I feel the old method of giving examples, giving sentences as illustrations for the word or phrase that you use. It's a very old method. This old method is extremely effective because examples are the best tools for learning. So the, the, the student, the learner picks it up very fast when it is very concretely presented before the student to the utilization, the use of the word, the use of the word correctly. So I have used more than one uh, illustrative method or uh, using examples um, as sentences which use the words that I want to teach or I want to present before you. This is a method that I have found useful and uh, effective with students. Very old method but it has been very effective because the students experience the application of the word very concretely. So that is a very effective method and I have used it throughout the book. Um, also, I have used quotes from uh, writers, um, thinkers, speakers, politicians, philosophers who have also used some of the words that I have tried to present here. Um, learning by heart is often, you know, rot learning is often dismissed in um, effective educational system. Particularly now, we have, a, we have developed a tendency to dismiss uh, rote learning. It's not a good idea too, but at the same time, learning quotations is actually very, very effective and successful way to learn a language. Um, Mark Antony's speech, I have a dream speech, Trist with destiny. These are speeches not merely for the language, we learn them not merely for the, for the language, for the ideas. And these ideas also present before us certain words and phrases which sort of, you know, get imprinted in our minds. And unconsciously, when it is needed for our communication, for our expression, we just use them without even our own knowledge. So this unconscious process of the use of language certainly can happen, I think, if this book is used um, carefully and also intelligently. Another thing that I would like to mention about uh, this book is that this should not be a closed chapter in learning words. To me, this should be a, a triggering tool. Each word discussed in this chapter, in, in this book, should actually lead the learner and the reader to similar words, to similar expressions and words beyond these words. In fact, the effective use of words not only helps you to communicate effectively, but ultimately gives you a sense of satisfaction, a contentment, not merely in the use of language, but in the matter of self-expression. It's a, it's a mental satisfaction that you get when you use the right word in the right place at the right time. Words indicating colors mean differently when used on different occasions. We know that Shakespeare used the term green-eyed monster, meaning jealousy. Whereas yellow-bellied means not brave, cowardly, timid, etc. And yellow journalism is actually journalism or writing which is spreading news for just for the sensation. We all know white-collar workers, white-collar jobs, jobs which do not necessitate or involve any physical labor, very comfortable work. But pink collar jobs are jobs which are paid low and which are usually related to women's work, home care, home nurses, etc. Words for certain organs of the body uh, express some words which uh, describe the face, some features of the face. They, they are when used on different occasions mean different differently. Nose, for example. A nosy person is one who wants to find out things that do not concern him. There are many words 
coined on the names of the parts of the human body. Some of them are related to the actual bodily functions, but some when used with other words mean entirely you know, different sense. For example, losing your face means losing the respect of others for you. But saving your face means saving your self-respect, retrieving your self-respect. Similarly, many features of the face also indicate different meanings. For instance, tongue, tongue in cheek means something entirely different from what tongue means or what cheek means. When you speak with your tongue in cheek, it means you are humorous, you are also trying to pull the other person's leg. You don't exactly mean what you say, but you have an underhand, underlying attempt to laugh at that person.